My name is Alex Dorgen. I'm an Ansible Solution Specialist. And today I'm going to be talking about how Ansible can be used for infrastructure awareness and also to generate reports that can be used within your organization. So first I want to start with what infrastructure awareness is. All infrastructure awareness is, is gathering the information directly from your sources of truth, whether that's directly from the devices themselves or from CMDB such as ServiceNow that should hold that source of truth. This is great because I'm getting it directly from wherever that source is rather than getting spreadsheets or other information that could be days, weeks, or months old. The way Ansible works is everything gets provided back in a structured JSON format, which makes it very easy to output that into any sort of dynamic documentation or reporting capability that I want. All this data is current. I could use the automation platform to schedule this to run daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever your particular industry requires. So why do I use Ansible for this? I get asked a lot, what out of the box capability for reporting does Ansible have? The beauty of Ansible is I can customize the reports to be exactly what I want them to be. A lot of times out of the box reports don't necessarily give you everything that you need, or they give you some of the pieces and it requires five reports to get there. By leveraging information directly from the source and the customization to create the reports myself, I get exactly the information that I want across all of the different platforms I want from a single source. So in this case, Ansible already has a lot of connections built in to gather facts from your Linux and Windows devices, as well as all of your networking platforms, so your Cisco's, your Arista's, your Junipers, and then it can also collect to the hypervisors themselves. So if I need to gather information about the resource groups that exist inside Azure, or I need to gather specific information about some of the VMs in AWS, I can leverage that technology platform to pull it directly from that source. So obviously there are a lot of different capabilities. Where did I get started? So I started off using that gather facts module and there were some existing modules for Linux and Windows that allowed me to put all of the current services as well as all the current packages installed on my servers. Very simple way to get the information that obviously isn't maintained in VMware or your hypervisor and then I use this to build a web server with all this information dynamically. So depending on how many servers I had, it created that report with all of that package and service information. So I could very easily see if there was a vulnerability in a package, I needed to see which servers had that package. I could very quickly gather that information. As I started to expand out, I looked at networking devices. So I need to know exactly how my networking devices were set up from the interfaces to the VLANs to the firmware that was actually set up on those particular devices. Again, I took that capability that I had for building a web server previously and expanded that to cover networking devices as well. This is a great way that I can see, especially when I look at are my devices up to date, I can check that firmware version. And if I wanted to, I can add in highlighting and things like that. So I can indicate to the owners of those particular devices that they have upgrades that they need to do. The latest thing that I've expanded to is looking at patching. So Linux and Windows servers obviously are being patched sometimes on a monthly, quarterly basis. I need to show that report to my security team or to the application owners after I've performed those particular actions. Especially when vulnerabilities come up, auditors need to see the information in order to verify that vulnerabilities have been corrected. So I've created that same capability with the web server, but I've also added the ability to print or create a CSV of those particular items the CSV even has a date time stamp, so I know exactly when that CSV was created with all of the patches that were applied across all the servers that I ran the job on. So again, very dynamic, very simple, but it gives me that capability to run across my entire environment. So obviously I have a lot of things connected to my environment today, but for the demonstration, I'm going to show the servers. So I'm gonna run across Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 and 8, as well as Windows 2016. And then I've got three different networking vendors tied together that'll show reporting capability for that. So let's dive into the demonstration and see some of the reports that can be generated using Ansible. So now let's look at actually generating these reports and how the reports look when we run through them. So I just ran several reports from the patching side of things as well as building my Linux, Windows, and networking reports. I've made some customizations to my Linux and Windows reports where I can have more detailed information, which includes the packages and services. As you can imagine, there are a lot of packages and servers on most hosts, so it can give me more information sometimes than I need, so I can have the capability to only give me a 
undetailed report, which would just be the host, the firmware, so I can keep track of that, or I can add in that detailed report capability. For my Linux report, I've also already scheduled this job to run weekly. So I've got a weekly Linux report scheduled to run at 9 a.m. on Saturday. Very easily can change that to run on any day of the week that I want, every single day, just depending on what my particular tolerance is for gathering this information. So I've gone through the process of running those reports. And as you can see, I've got a Linux report that gives me all my different Linux servers that I've chosen to run this on. I can see all of the different package facts that exist from my individual hosts. If I want to sort by name and release, I've got that set up as well. And I can also see all of the services that are on this particular host, including if they are running or stopped and what the source is. It's a very quick and easy way to see exactly what's going on. And if I'm concerned about a particular package, maybe I'm concerned there's a vulnerability for a particular package, I can actually search for that. And the way this particular report is designed is it will only give me hosts that have that package installed on it. So in this case, all of these hosts have that package. So it's a very easy way to see, yes, that's across all of my hosts. And obviously if there are things that are specific to, you know, like Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, like Python 3, I can search for that and only those particular hosts would show up as expected. And again, I can see the kernel version. So if I'm concerned about a vulnerability at the kernel level, I can very easily see exactly what version I have across all of my different hosts. Same thing applies to Windows. So I've got two Windows hosts running and I can see all the package facts as well as the services running on my Windows host, including their Windows service name, display name, same capability across the board to very easily keep track of exactly what's going on in my Windows environment. As I said, my next step was expanding into networking. So I've added that networking capability so I can see exactly what the serial number of my devices are, if they're a physical device, as well as the code version. So as I keep track of firmware and I want to verify that capability, I can. And then I also have it set up where I can see all of the interfaces and the details about that. If there are VLANs, I can see any VLANs that are installed. Obviously, if certain devices don't have pieces set up, I do have it set up where it just will not provide that information because it's not configured on that device. So again, it provides that dynamic capability with the understanding that not every device is configured exactly the same, but I still want to have a very easy way to see exactly what that capability is. My last use case that I jumped into was patching. So I want to know exactly what state my servers are. So I just ran this patching job to patch everything on my Red Hat Enterprise Linux servers. So I can see that some devices are already up to date, while a few others did have packages that need to be installed. So a few things from my Elasticsearch capability, as well as several things on my Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 box that just rolled out. Again, I kept this in this state to make sure you could see how very easy to see this. And it even has a timestamp at the bottom. So I know exactly when this particular patching job was run. And if you notice at the top, I've got this download CSV and print capability. So print will leverage the print function of your particular device. So just like you're used to where you can save to a PDF, I could generate a PDF of this exact report with that timestamp at the bottom. Or if you'd prefer, I can download a CSV with that date timestamp and now I can see exactly that same report with the host name and then the device status with all that was updated there. The exact same capability applies to my Windows servers because they need to have that same capability. So as you can see that date timestamp and I've got the same download CSV or print capability. Sometimes people wanna see those in an email. I've added that same capability in for my patching reports where I get an email that says, here is your patching results. So as you can see, here is that exact same Linux patching job that you just saw, as well as my Windows patching job. And as you'd expect, I don't want to have those buttons in there. So if I decide I do want to print those particular reports, when I click print, it does exclude those, those buttons out of there. So again, I provide that exact same capability for reporting with that date timestamp at the bottom so I can have accurate and certified reporting as I go through that process. So what other kind of things can I create reports out of? I've been working with several customers that are actively doing this today. And some of the things that they started with were certs, especially with certs around Windows where they expire every year. I need to verify that they are up to date and then provide that information out to those server application owners to ensure that they get updated. So they created a report that created every single survey, highlighted those that had expired to ensure that could be taken care of by the appropriate authority. They also looked at the security side of things what user accounts existed across these different servers. 
were there ones that had never been logged into or there were extra ones that did not need to be there that had extra access that really was not necessary for that particular user. So they're able to notify the application owners and clean up that aspect. One of the other things that they've focused on from a audit and admin capability was tagging. They had specific tagging requirements for every single server in their environment, including what the application was, who the application owner is, and a lot of other information about it so they can easily keep track of who owned what server. So they were able to easily generate tags across all of their servers and once again, provided a very easy list of servers that were not tagged properly to ensure that that issue was corrected. Also, you can easily add in, here's a list of inactive VMs, whether it's VMs that hadn't had anything done in a while or VMs that were turned off and hadn't been fully deleted. A nice, easy way to remove unnecessary bandwidth that has been taken up by servers that really aren't being used today. Maybe reporting in a PDF or in a web page isn't for you. So I've had a customer that's also been able to push this into a database. So they actually created an entire Postgres database using the information gathered by Ansible for easy querying and reporting later on. And then the beauty of Ansible, and similar to what I've done, all of this can end up in a collection so I can easily share this out with my entire organization to take advantage of the reports that I've created. So it doesn't need to be a one-off for every single person within your organization as they look into how can I meet my compliance and reporting requirements. So there are a lot of different ways to get started. I encourage you just to look at internally what kind of reporting that you need and then start looking at what Ansible can gather in terms of facts and info modules and then really start expanding out. Thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit about infrastructure awareness and reporting. And I hope this gives you a better idea of how Ansible can help fit that need.